You may be aware that this weekend, Friday and Saturday, was the diocesan convention for our Episcopal Diocese. Uh, our diocese is the entire western half of Washington State from the Canadian border to Oregon and from the crest of the Cascades to all the way out to the ocean, including the peninsula. Uh, there are about a hundred worshiping congregations in that area and at diocesan convention there are representatives from every congregation and all of the clergy gather together. We had about, well, we had about 350 people voting and then another hundred or so exhibitors and visitors and guests. Uh, I happen to love diocesan convention and I was very excited to be there with uh, four of our, five of our delegates this weekend. And I would like to invite those who are here, and I think that's Sally and Heidi, to come on up to the lectern and share something of what they were excited to learn about or that sparked passion or curiosity in uh, all of the things that we did there. And while they're coming up, I'll tell you that Friday was a day of workshops and more, more than 40 workshops that people could attend. Um, and Heidi and Sally were actually part of a workshop, presenters. And then Saturday was a day of business. And please introduce yourself and then just tell us. All right, my name is Heidi Ekman. Um, this year I was a delegate and also a presenter at convention, as Sabeth mentioned. Sally and I were a part of a diocesan-wide young adult panel talking about how we can enrich that part of our, our diocese, our churches, our congregations. And so it was, it was interesting to be a part of that and have people actually come up and ask us what our opinions are, I feel like, unless you're on the vestry, you know, there aren't very many places in churches where the younger folks are actually um, consulted. Um, so that was a lot of fun. The other thing, just in general, uh, I love the workshops. I think it's a really good opportunity to see what other communities are doing within our church and within our region. And so if there are ministries that you're passionate about, you can see what else is work, what, what, what is working elsewhere, and can we bring that here? Can we partner together? Can we, what can we do to improve? And so it's a great opportunity to learn more about what else is going on in our region. Good morning. I'm Sally Cinder. This is Ahan. Uh, yeah, I really love going to gatherings of the Episcopal Church. I think it helps remind you just how large and diverse the church can be. Um, I find the Episcopal Church to be so intentional in how it involves its members in making decisions and helping to articulate what we believe and how we show up um, around what we believe. So uh, I've gone to convention twice and definitely recommend it for anybody who wants to be more involved or to see how the church operates um, at that level. Stay here, honey. Um, we did present on, it was called Young Adults in the Episcopal Church, What Are They Looking For and Are They Finding It? Uh, which I thought was a really good title. Um, and we talked a lot about how I think there's a lot of fear and anxiety nationally across the church that older generations are um, they're getting older and younger people are not necessarily coming to church and this fear that what will the future of the church be uh, but I think a lot of us pushed back on that and talked about how much we love the history and tradition of the Episcopal Church and that's part of what brought us here uh, but we also believe there is a a great future for the church, um, but it might look different than what it's looked like in the past. And part of that is this church needs to be willing to grow and evolve and change um, and respond to the things that feel 
so important to understanding our faith and our position um, as Christians in our country, our city, our world. Um, and so what does that mean? And uh, I think young people are, are definitely looking for something that the Episcopal Church can provide. We just might need to start articulating it in evolving ways um, beyond what's happened or how we've you know looked to the church in the past. So uh, it was a really good conversation and um, would love to talk more with anybody who's interested. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. I'll share a little bit, a few of the things that I was excited about at convention. Uh, on Saturday, yesterday morning, Friday, one of those days at the beginning, uh, the, we welcomed a brand new mission station. A mission station in this diocese is a, a baby congregation. They are just getting started, not big enough to be formal, uh, formally recognized mission, but big enough that they're gathering and they have clergy and we want to recognize and support them. And the congregation we welcomed is St. Michael South Sudanese Congregation. Um, it was surprising to some of the members of our delegation to learn that the fastest growing uh, segment of churches in our diocese are the Pan-African churches and uh, Anglicans who ha are emigrating from Africa and uh, have clergy. And we are excited to uh, support them. The other thing I was excited about is to learn more about our new bishop. We consecrated a new bishop in the middle of September, and we are still getting to know him. And uh, we dis have discovered that he is humble and fully engaged and pastoral and faithful. And as demonstrated by his chuckling when he uh, identified Tukwila, and the whole assembly said, that's Tukwila, uh, he has a sense of humor as well. Uh, one of the most powerful moments of convention for me came at, during the Eucharist yesterday as I had been invited to be a uh, anointing minister for healing prayers and found out when I got to convention that I would be doing that in a team with the bishop to be there with God's people and offering prayers and anointing for healing was a very powerful witness, and uh, I felt really privileged to be there and humbled. Bishop Phil took two specific opportunities to engage and guide us and give us some hint of the things that he's thinking about in his leadership. On Friday, in the middle of the day, he called us all together for a plenary conversation uh, entitled, The Church We Yearn For where he acknowledged, uh, he challenged us to acknowledge the passing of Christendom and the church the way it was 50 years ago, and to refocus ourselves on the mission that Jesus gives us, go therefore and make disciples of all people. And that is a very brief summary of an inspiring presentation delivered with humor and compassion and some provocative questions for reflection and conversation. The second uh, opportunity to hear his, some of his leadership vision and engage with him was in his convention address, was given as the sermon for yesterday's uh, Eucharist. He gave a wide range of celebrations and reflections about the diocese, as he's already learning about it, and he acknowledged the losses that many congregations, many of us, are feeling with fewer people in church, with the stresses of the world that we live in today. And his sermon closed with an invitation to laying on of hands and anointing for healing. 
since conver the convention was live streamed and thus recorded, you can check out his uh, presentations on the convention website. I'll be happy to share uh, where you can find them so you don't have to listen to the whole day's worth of a live stream. The theme of healing is par part of our Bishop Phil's message to us, healing and rest, and healing features prominently in today's gospel. Jesus and his disciples are leaving Jericho when they encounter Bartimaeus. Now Bartimaeus may be blind, but he has heard of Jesus and his healing ministry, and he wants some of that. Uh, Mark, the gospeler that we are listening to, is a careful curator of the good news that he tells. And his good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, focuses on healing in body, mind, and spirit, healing as salvation. Jesus brings physical healing as a representation, a promise that we can see of the good news of God's reign, where all people and creation see and know dignity, peace, and plenty. Bartimaeus believes Jesus has power to heal his sight. And once he is healed, he cannot look away from Jesus, and he follows Jesus on the way. If we trust Jesus' vision for how to walk in love, how to continue his ministry of healing to bring the good news of God's reign to this world that we live in, this world that is full of violence and anger and strife, if we trust Jesus' vision, we will find clarity in our own sight about the way to follow him. The first step to trusting Jesus' vision is to ask for our own healing, healing of our anger and grief, our weariness and despair, for our eyes to be opened, to see God at work in the world around us, so that we may join Jesus' mission of making disciples. Holy God, you sent your Son to live among us that we might know you better. In your mercy, grant us health and healing for our relationships with you, with our families and friends, and with our communities. Mend broken hearts and give us pathways to reconciliation. We pray this through Jesus the Christ, the image of the invisible God who shows us the way to walk in love. Amen.